In this segment, we're going to talk about how to concretely produce word vectors or word embeddings given a particular algorithm that's called the skipgram, uh, well, a model called the skipgram model. So the input to this method is a large corpus of sentences. OK, and so unlike other techniques for things like sentiment analysis, where we've thought about supervised learning of classification, uh, here all we need is raw data. And you'll see why when we define it a little bit later. So you know, literally, the best thing to do here is to just scrape as much data as you can from the web and uh, try, to, uh, you know, try to learn your embeddings over that. Uh, and there's some, there's some issues with that, particularly if you pick up uh, kind of sensitive data or things that you don't, you know, associations that you don't necessarily want your model to have. But this is the standard methodology uh, in any case, which is to try to get as much data of the form that you do want as possible. All right. And the output is going to be vectors. V and C for each word type W. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, type here to reflect that for the word movie, there's going to be a single V and a single C, um, even though we're going to see many occurrences of the token movie all throughout the text. So we'll uh, you know, there might be thousands of occurrences of movie as a token, but there's going to be one vector associated with the word type movie. All right. The hyperparameters of this method are a word vector dimension d, um, which I said, you know, maybe we could use 50 or 300 or something in that range. These are common values that you see um, in uh, kind of pre-computed and distributed word embeddings, uh, as well as what's called a window size k. All right. So uh, we're going to assume k equals 1 for right now. And then let's look at how this works. So. Here's one of our example sentences, the film inspired. What we're going to do is uh, take all neighbors of each word token up to k um, you know, positions away. OK, so um, in this case, if k, if k were equal to 2, you would look two words on either side um, you know, if you had more words in the sentence. And now what we have is we basically have uh, what we call our word and our context word. And then the skipgram model is a probabilistic model of context given a word. So specifically, it's defined in the following way. All right, if we use y to denote the context word and x to denote the word, uh, then we have something that should look somewhat familiar.
Okay, so this looks like multi-class logistic regression in that we have uh, an exponential of some kind of score um, divided by a sum of exponentials. So things I want to point out are that this bottom sum is over the vocabulary. So uh, we, if we have 10,000 words that we've seen in our data, this is going to be a sum over all 10,000 of them. All right, and then um, V and C are model parameters. Um, and, you know, each of these is going to be V by D. And the way to think about this is just that, uh, you know, basically think about stacking up the vectors for these words into one big matrix. And so you're going to have V rows, and each of those is a D-dimensional uh, word embedding. And we have two different sets of parameters for uh, one, you know, one for V and one for C. So we have two times V times D parameters in this model. All right. So now let's finally think a little bit about what this is actually saying. Um, basically, what this model says is if you know V X is similar to see why, um, why is likely to be in X's context, right? So we are taking this dot product and then exponentiating. If you imagine that uh, VX and CY are very closely aligned, then their dot product is going to be large. And then when we exponentiate that, this is going to get a high score, and then we'll assign that thing a high probability. <clears throat> so again, we're learning two different sets of vectors here, v and c, uh, but the idea is that we should be able to capture relationships that say, all right, you know, v, uh, basically, v, v for one word being similar to c for another word is going to be indicative of those two things occurring near each other. All right, let's take a look at an example here. So we have a uh, relatively simple corpus here. Um, and then let's assume that we have uh, d equal 2. Um, and we just have the two words, I and saw, and they look like this. So this is V saw, and this is V I. So spoiler alert, the way this algorithm is going to work is that we are going to randomly initialize all of these parameters and run gradient descent. So there's no notion of like having a fixed set of vectors a priori, but we are taking this fixed set of vectors here just to understand mathematically what's going on, uh, you know, in this computation and and what is, you know, what what's kind of happening here. Okay, so we get two word and context pairs from this. Um, so in one, the word is I and the context is saw, and the other, the context there, the word is saw and the context is I. All right, so the first thing we can do to just kind of understand a little bit more here um, if C saw is one zero and C I is zero one. Um, What is P of context given uh, the word is saw? All right, so just to, just to kind of understand, um, just to understand kind of what's going on here, uh, what we are saying is that uh, 
Seesaw is going to be over here at the same place as VI. Um, and then CI is going to be up here. I'm drawing them not totally on top of each other, but they are. And we could go through the computation that we saw on the previous slide. Uh, and for this particular example, we have to compute x of v uh, saw dot c i, and then also x of v saw dot c saw. Now, this is important because remember, we have to loop over the whole vocabulary. So even though we, we never see like saw and saw next to each other, like what we're thinking about when we think about this distribution is we're thinking about the whole vocab. And so we need to compute these, these values for everything in the vocabulary. OK, so um, V saw and C saw here are orthogonal if you look up at the, the picture. And so uh, the exp of, of this is going to be 1. Um, and then uh, V saw and CI are aligned. Their dot product is going to be 1. And then the exp of that, we're going to say it's roughly equal to 3. We're going to assume E is 3. Um, so in this case, P of uh, context equals I given word equals saw is uh, 3 fourths. And then uh, for saw given saw, um, it's going to be 1 fourth. So this is kind of nice in that it can sort of we, we've set up these word and context vectors, and it kind of confirms our intuition um, about how this should behave, right? We should have, uh, you know, saw be more likely, or yeah, I, I more likely to happen given saw than the other way around. The other thing it shows you is this idea that the, the word space V and the context space V are not really like the same, right? Um, in fact, we kind of need them in this case to be like rotations of each other so that like the words can be close to their contexts, um, but they're not necessarily close to like those, you know, word vectors, right? Like V saw and CI need to be close to each other, but V saw and VI are typically not. Okay. So that, give, that gives you a kind of sense of this computation. Um, so now we're going to talk about training this. And training it is also going to follow a similar uh, kind of schema as we've seen before. OK, so remember that based on our window size k, we extract a certain number of word and context pairs, like we saw in the example. And what we're going to do in training is we are going to maximize the sum over these pairs of the log probability of that context given that word. So again, given, given the web, we just with k equals 1, we're just kind of extracting these adjacent pairs of words. We form this big training set of these word context pairs. And now we want to maximize the probability of the, the sum of the log probabilities of the observed pairs. So the thing I will say that is a bit different from sentiment is that this is an, uh, I'm going to say, a quote unquote, impossible problem. We're never going to be able to. Uh, Uh, well, I'll say we can't, we can't drive the probability to 1. We're never going to be able to fit this distribution perfectly, or I guess we're never going to be able to completely optimize this objective from the standpoint of getting every prob prediction to be of probability 1. Um, because there's going to be uh, many words that occur in the context of a single word x. 
So you're going to have these like conflicting training examples. So unlike classification, where it's totally reasonable to assume that you can fit the data perfectly, um, and in many cases, a, a big enough neural network will, uh, here that's not going to happen. And uh, the last thing I'll point out here is that uh, we are going to initialize our parameters randomly. So again, we've talked about for neural networks how important it is to have good initialization. Here we're just going to kind of throw out some random vectors and then iterate over this data. And what happens roughly is that you know, the model is going to kind of pull you know, similar vectors together over time because they're going to be seen in similar contexts. And optimizing this objective is going to give us vectors of the sort that we want. So this is the basic skipgram model and skipgram uh, training procedure. Uh, we'll talk more about alternatives to this and understanding it uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, but this is the foundation for producing word vectors, which are going to be useful for lots of different NLP tasks. Um, and it's a kind of nice technique that builds out of a lot of things we've seen so far. That's it for this segment.